So I'm going to do that right now. Well, I wanna thank everyone for coming and picking up your kits um, or if you had them delivered. Thanks uh, so much for signing up for the workshop today. We wanted to do something a little bit different um, now that we're all starting to get back out into the neighborhoods and the communities and reconnect with one another. It feels really good to be able to do these, do these projects. Um, so this is our first, we've been all virtual um, for gosh, over a year now. So this is our first workshop where we're kind of splitting it up a little bit. Um, and obviously the projects are, Vic will go over in detail about each of the kits, um, but it's at your own comfort level. You know, we want everyone to feel safe when they are doing those those projects. Um, but we thought it would be a really good way to get everyone back out into the neighborhoods, um, talking to their neighbors and their community members, um, and just a really good way to, to start interacting again. So I am going to kick things off here and share my screen if I can remember how to do that. All right. So there we go. We're going to start off uh, just a quick overview of Collective Impact Lincoln in case you're not familiar. Uh, we are a partnership between the three nonprofit organizations that you see represented here, Civic Nebraska, Nebraska Appleseed, and the South of Downtown Community Development Organization. So we got started in 2017 and we are now in our second phase of the project, our fourth year. We were able to secure additional funding to keep this thing going for another few years, which is really exciting. Um, essentially, we want to support community conversations in the neighborhoods. We want to encourage neighborhood and resident leadership and action opportunities to help create a more vibrant and inclusive place to live. Um, and we really do encourage and believe in resident-led change. We want you all to be the change makers um, and to be advocating on the issues that you care about and that are you know, central to, to your communities. And so we focus on six specific neighborhoods in Lincoln's core, uh, core neighborhoods. So that's Belmont and Clinton, University Place and Hartley and Everett and near South. And so we kind of split up those six neighborhoods across the three organizations. Um, and so the way that we try to accomplish these things um, that I just described is through deep canvassing. Uh, for the first few years of the project, we just went, our organizers knocked on doors and talked to folks and had those very intense conversations about what are the things you like in your neighborhood? What are some of the things you wish you could change or improve upon? Um, and so we just really took the time to listen to folks and to, to gain that understanding. And then from there, we got to hear about different neighborhood projects that that folks wanted to to work on. Um, so we're there to we're 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 hanging out over here, ready to support that in whatever way we can. We did a couple of rounds of mini grant funding. We did one round in 2019, and we just wrapped up another round. Um, so we can try to fund some of those incredible projects that we want to see happen. Um, but we're also just here to brainstorm think through what makes the most sense. How do you create that engagement across the neighborhoods when you're trying to make some of these things happen? So we're always here to provide that support. Um, the leadership trainings such as these, community builder workshops is, is essential to, to our work and those have adapted and changed over time. Um, so I will send a feedback form and evaluation form after this workshop because we wanna know what you want to learn about um, and what are some ways that we can help develop those, those leadership skills um, within your, uh, your community and, and what you see going on there. So, so we offer these and then we, all, we also help support and develop action committees. We have several now that have been um, you know, up and running for, for the last few years, but we have new ones that are popping up all of the time and we're just here to be able to help support those. And then the, the policy is, is a big part of our work. Um, so we research different policy initiatives that we think will impact the lives of uh, the Lincolnites, not just in our neighborhoods, but potentially across the city um, and advocate for systemic change uh, through those avenues. And over the last few years, we have been uh, 
you probably see a few of us wearing these uh, Nebraska needs safe and affordable housing shirts. Um, so we have been primarily focused on uh, affordable housing issues um, and safe housing. So that is where that work falls into place. Um, and we have lots more information about that if that's something that you're interested in. And so what we're gonna do now, and I'm probably gonna stop sharing my screen so we can all see each other, but we're gonna go around the room and take a little bit of time to introduce ourselves. So I'll just ask everyone, um, we'll just do this popcorn style, share your name and your pronouns. And then Vic changed it up for us. He added a different question here, which I'm all about. And it is, where in Lincoln do you spend a lot of time? Where is a place you'd like to spend more time? So, whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna make Vic go first since I still need to think about the second question. That is fair. And something I'm gonna touch on later is, yeah, relevant to you trying whatever it is you're asking other people to try. Um, so I'm Vic, um, I'm a community organizer with Nebraska Appleseed. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, and a place that I spend a lot of time is my house because I am still working from home, specifically in my basement right here. Um, and a place I would like to spend more time is basically like any other place. No, um, <laughs> um, I do want to be more in the Belmont neighborhood, um, which is one of my, my focus neighborhoods and try to spend some more time at the Belmont Community Center and um, near the elementary, so. I will, I'm looking for like people's sense of readiness on their faces. I'm gonna pass to Isabel, you look eager, right? I think that's just my face. Um, Cause I like to talk in big groups. Um, <clears throat> my name is Isabel. I am the director of community engagement over at the South of Downtown Community Development Organization. Um, <clears throat> a place where I'm spending a lot of time is I'm trying to think of outside of my house. Um, a place where I want to spend more time is at Cooper Park because that's my favorite park. Um, and I really love like running into people that I know from the community, just like out in a walk at Cooper Park. Um, but a place that I'm spending a lot of my time right now is, um, yeah, I guess my house. I don't really have another option for that. Oh, outside of my house, um, we, we like to go to Pioneers Park a lot. Um, and so like walking our dog and just hanging out and going on a nice long walk is really good. So I think that would be another place where I spend a lot of my time. Um, but I'm, I wanna go back to Cooper Park so many more times. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to, I think Jody looks ready. That must be my face too, but I was enjoying that you said that, that cracks me up. Uh, hi, you guys. My name is Jody Renee Giron, and I my pronouns are she and hers. Um, Vic, I had to think about your question too because I feel like the last years changed all my expectations of time and place. It's like a Doctor Who mad box kind of thing. Um, I think I'm spending most of my time on the east side of town. It's pretty evenly split. I work for the the uh, community learning centers with the public schools and I work in the northeast side of town. So I'm up there quite a bit, northeast high, um, Dawes, Pershing. But then I have a, my youngest goes to southeast, Lincoln southeast. And so I find myself, and we live in that uh, neighborhood, College View. And so pretty heavily invested there. So I feel like my groove is on in East Lincoln. But I want to spend more time in the near south downtown area because that to me feels like I grew up in urban Denver back before urban Denver was like actually a big city. And then as it became one um, and slowly gentrified into the lovely weird hipster place that it is today and that sort of feels it's just that diverse old housing new housing bodega I want to spend more time, I think there. And I'm gonna pick Emma because she keeps showing up on my screen and I'm digging her hair. Thank you. Um, hi, my name's Emma. My pronouns are they, them. And um, I am so happy everyone's been saying their house because honestly, I've spent a lot of time here. Um, I do like going to homes. Like one of my friends just moved here and she uh, has a dog. So she's been taking me down to the dog park there too, uh, which has been really fun. And um, 
a place I would like to spend more time is um, just in like the south of downtown community because, sorry, um, this is my first year living here and I've really enjoyed the community and um, I'm right at like 10th and C. So I'd love to, you know, just make more connections and meet more people and get out more. So yeah, I think that's it. But um, I can't see anybody's names on here. So <laughs> I don't know who to pass it on to. I'm sorry, I don't know how to use this. No <laughs> Okay, you pick for me. Thank I'll you. I'll go right just next to you. Um, <laughs> Shayla is on my screen next to you. There you go, that works. Hi, I'm Shayla. I am the school community coordinator over at Prescott. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I think I spend most of my time in my apartment or the school. Those are like my two designated spots. I'm three minutes driving from the school, 15 walking. So um, that's where I'm at most of the time. I think I need to get back into going to uh, Pioneers Park a lot more because I used to work there before I moved back into schools. But yeah, it'd be nice to be there more often. Should I go next? <laughs> Makes sense. Hello. Uh, my name is Spencer Lemon. Uh, he, him, his. I am the assistant SEC at Lincoln Northeast High School. Uh, so if you've talked to Michael Band, if you've worked with Michael, he's a great guy. Um, and I do that through Civic Nebraska. I will be leaving Civic Hall because I got hired to teach social studies at Lincoln Northeast High School. So just a fun announcement that I've been very excited about. Um, I spend a lot of time on bike trails um, and I probably should spend more time in the near South neighborhood where I live. Um, we've been here for a little bit and because of the pandemic, we haven't really made an effort to get to know neighbors or anything, um, which is a little bit sad, but you know, understand given the current uh, global pandemic. So that's all I got for now. Um, oh, uh, who should we pass it off to? I don't know. Uh, and Morgan? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Morgan Spies. Uh, she, her, my pronouns. Uh, a place where I spend a lot of time is my house too. Uh, I have a I have a garden in the backyard, and I'm spending a lot of time preparing the backyard, um, growing some food. Uh, another place where I spend a lot of time is Pioneers Park. I work as as a preschool teacher there, so I've been spending many a day there, many an hour there. Um, a place where I'd want to spend more time is uh, Wilderness Park. I have not spent a lot of time there since the weather has gotten nice because I've been in the garden instead. But now that the planting is waning, I'll be spending more time in wilderness, mushrooming and foraging for some edible foods that I've been reading about, but I don't know if they exist in wilderness or not yet. So um, I'll pass it to Allie. Hi, uh, my name is Allie and my pronouns are she, oh, sorry, my cat is getting into something because um, he wants my attention and I've been ignoring him. Um, uh, I'm a community organizer at South of Downtown CDO, so I get to work with Isabel and I've been spending most of my time honestly sitting on this couch that I'm sitting on right now and I would definitely love to spend more time at Cooper Park because I'm moving a block away. So Isabel, we should go together and we should pick up litter. Yes, that would be so much fun. Um, and I'm gonna pass it off to Emily. Hey, I'm Emily Traunick. Uh, I work with the Lincoln CLCs through LPS um, and I serve the schools that are in the neighborhoods of near South Everett and South Salt Creek. Um, I spend a lot of time in my own neighborhood, which is College View. Um, it's like College View High Street neighborhood. It's the boundaries are kind of weird, um, but we walk our dog religiously. So we walk maybe at least twice a day because he doesn't poop in our backyard. He only does that on walks. <laughs> so walking is pretty important. Um, but like, honestly, that's the best way to meet neighbors, you know, like you're carrying your poop bag and saying hi to people with it, you know? So um, the neighborhoods that I would like to spend more time in is, are the neighborhoods that I'm supposed to be serving. 
which is weird during a pandemic. Um, but I used to live there. I used to live in the Everett neighborhood and um, I still have friends that live there. So on top of wanting to just spend time to serve that neighborhood, I really just want to hang out with my friends. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's me. Oh, um, I'll send it off to Mika. I'm reading Isabel's comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Mika, I use uh, she, her pronouns. Um, I am part of the CAL team working at Nebraska Appleseed. Um, I just moved here. So honestly, I feel like I have a very small radius for my apartment, but I spent a lot of time on the trails by Salt Creek. Um, so that's been fun. Um, and a place I'd like to spend more time, um, <laughs> I want to spend more time at Bonwich. I <laughs> really like their food. So, um, and then I'll pass it to Christy. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Christy. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I think I spend a lot of time, especially in the summer when the, uh, is the Sunken Gardens. I live in the near south neighborhood, so I would walk my dog there all the time, like before, morning walks is great. Um, and a place that I like to spend more time, probably my bed. I just got my second shot of, you know, vaccination. So if you see me like moving my arm, it's cause like I'm in pain. Um, so yeah, any, any um, helpful advice too. I'm probably gonna spend the rest of the day after this CBW in bed. So I think I will pass it off to Casey, right? I think you're the last one. I think that's right. Hi everyone, I'm Casey Ogle. I'm the staff attorney for Collective Impact Lincoln and I'm at Nebraska Appleseed. Pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I have been also spending a lot of time in my house, but um, there's a, a neighborhood where I walk my dog as well every day. So I've been spending a lot of time in that neighborhood. Um, I don't, it doesn't have a name. I've looked for it. I'm a little frustrated. Everyone gets to share cool neighborhood names and I don't know my neighborhood. It, I don't think it's named. So, um, but we walk around in that neighborhood unnamed and a place I'd like to spend more time. Um, I enjoyed spending time in university place when I was going to law school. So I, I'd like to spend more time there again. And also just like going places downtown. So would enjoy that. And yeah, I will name it Casey's Neighborhood. I'll stake the claim. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Casey. Um, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to answer these questions because now that I've heard you all answer them, I want to, I want to share too. So uh, my name is Nancy Petito. I never actually introduced myself at the beginning of this thing. Um, and I'm the director of Collective Impact Lincoln. I'm housed over at Civic Nebraska and I use she, her pronouns. Um, and besides spending a lot of time in my house, in this office, um, we live in the Antelope Park neighborhood right off of 33rd and South. And so we walk our dogs also at least twice a day because they are very high energy pups and they need, well, they still drive me just up the wall, but um, they will bark less if I take them on multiple walks. And so I walk them on the Rock Island Trail and just over to Antelope Park um, a couple times a day. And I, I would love to be able to just get back into all the neighborhoods that we work in within CIL. I'm really looking forward to, um, I think there's going to be some events happening this summer uh, that hopefully we'll be able to start seeing some folks again and you know being safe about it, but just getting back into those spaces together um, and having conversations face to face. So that's something that I've really been looking forward to. So thanks everyone for sharing. That's um, it's just so helpful to to hear all those different um, perspectives and and hear where people are and what they've been doing. And so I think at this point we're going to move on to the next uh, session. And Christy, I believe you are going to take it from here. Yes. Am I sharing the presentation or I should have figured it out? You can do it. I made you a co-host, but if you want me to share the slides, I'd be happy to, whatever works best. Yeah, well, you do that. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. 
Yay, yeah, let's get, let's learn about tactical urbanism. And I feel like it's something that it's been around for a, a really long time. Of, um, and it's usually a fast action temporarily in use with like short term materials and usually without permission, but it's a quick way to, to use like public engagement to um, invest in infrastructures faster. Um, if like the city governments aren't doing it or paying attention enough for in a certain part of your neighborhood, what you can do is um, as like a, as a resident, a community member, um, someone that just cares about the public realm is use tactical ur urbanism. Um, I believe there's a, sh a little video on the next slide, Nancy. I might have to unmute myself for it to work. Hey, Nancy. Yeah, I think you have to hit share audio on the zoom options. Mm, okay. Where is that? It'll might, be under. Oh, go ahead, Vic. I, I it might be the the um, same as system like when you're um, if you press the little arrow thing on your um, mic um so that it it's is. sharing got it got it got it got it got it okay password oh boy this is complicated <laughs> it says i have to restart well that sounds like a nightmare if you want to stop sharing i can also i i can start it over for mine let's do that technical difficulties I didn't mean to do that, but okay. one sec, folks. Just making a little bit of small talk. Um, I love the Strong Towns website. There's like a bunch of like cool people who run it, um, which is awesome. Can you hear it? It's very faint. A public uh, and project delivery process. Try things out in the short term. Let's see if we can, we can uh, learn from them, engage people in a conversation about making changes to streets and public spaces, and then investing in those elements that work well and gain support through a much more open process. Tactical urbanism has been around for a really long time. It's very quick, nimble, inexpensive ways to demonstrate how you can change the street and make it safer and better for people on bikes, for people on foot. Uh, technical urbanism to me means taking a space that's previously been unused and livening it up in a way that makes it more of a, an engaging space as opposed to have it feel cold or dangerous. So the really fun part about tactical urbanism is it allows people to kind of riff on the idea. So oh, maybe three or four years ago, we started seeing and then applying orange traffic cones, which is, you know, cones are ubiquitous in any city. You can find them on the street, you can find them in public space, you can 
pull them off the back of a public works truck. It's a journey that's about uh, two years old now, I guess. Started in uh, August of 2016 when I dropped some flowers and cones in the buffer of a bike lane after uh, a young woman, Anita Kerman, was killed riding on uh, Mass Ave and Beacon Street. I went to Home Depot. Uh, I bought flowers that were, I don't know, five or ten bucks a pot, and I stole some traffic cones from a work site. Then I did a GoFundMe, and I wound up raising five or six thousand bucks. So then it was, I had access to a lot more materials. And since then, I've just continued to do it. I got involved with a few tactical urbanism projects just locally on my street corner, putting out some cones to slow down drivers. I put out a couple of cones and boom, it worked instantly. Two cones right at the corner and drivers turning would just slow down and stop for pedestrians. It really worked like magic. <laughs> There's a whole movement uh, around the country setting up transformation departments as opposed to transportation departments uh, in Seattle and Portland and Boston and New York City. There is the New York City Department of Transformation, and they've done some really big, high-profile projects. The Department of Transformation put out cones with sunflowers on them for a morning commute and posted something on Twitter to say that we fixed the Christie Street bike lane. And this fed into the community board support, the local advocate proposal, and we think, we hope, pushed DOT a little farther to get the Christie Street bike lane project in and done. And it's really, I think, one of the best protected bike lanes in the city. So behind me is the first tactical urbanism project in Rotterdam. The local municipality asked us to to make something creative and connect the, part, the different parts of the intersection together. And what is interesting also about this, we are using here thermoplast, and because we wanted to do this uh, intervention very quick and uh, very simple and easy to, to apply, we use standard traffic and highway markings. So we're using something that is normally oriented into car traffic, and we make it into something that celebrates more the pedestrians. Some friends of mine in Edmonton reimagined a bus stop and I looked at it and there's little garden gnomes and flowers all over the place and they put a cushion on the bench gives the opportunity for kids to play there tactical urbanism is not new but what was missing is the ubiquitous use of social media like twitter to spread use of materials around the globe now you can see somebody in New York or Boston or Sydney, Australia, or you know anywhere in Europe put out a new project. You see people take that idea and then iterate on it or use it themselves. Seeing what's been happening in San Francisco, in New York, Portland is really inspiring, and I feel like we all feed off of each other. Interest is a great place to find ideas. In general, just stick with local artists, with local residents, and try to convince the local municipality that. It might be a very simple, easy, and quite cheap way to promote your city. Twitter and Facebook and Instagram even have done a lot to really expose people to the options and possibilities. It's great to see that you know these grassroots movements can just come along and change a space. We've seen people take, say, pinwheels and put them on top, flowers uh, to beautify them, give them a little bit of a different edge. I think that the, the flowers are crucial. They're so not threatening. They introduce joy into the intervention. More recently, we've seen a lot of people use plungers. Again, very low cost and funny material to be using, but which act and look like ballers. You put out flowers on a bike lane and that's something different that you don't see every day. You put plungers out and you definitely don't see that every day. Um, so you can see how this would be ripe for a lot of media attention, for a lot of social media attention. You know, whenever there's a fatality, I like to try and go and visit the site and see if there's something that's really easy that I can do to fix it and to show the city that something can be done really quickly. So I sort of pride myself on getting there and doing something before that. These big institutions, our city government, they can't move quickly. They can't move nimbly. They're not designed to do that. But you as an individual citizen, you can. Without having to be a professional, you can use these low cost materials and go out and Show people, show your city leaders, show your neighbors, show business owners, 
show yourself that change is possible. We see people who aren't street advocates do this. We see crossing guards do this. They'll put out traffic cones at corners to make sure that drivers slow down when they're coming around a corner and yield to kids in the crosswalk. And so it's not thinking that you can solve all of the urban transportation problems or placemaking problems in one go, but thinking that I'm gonna do this one thing that I am I know that I can do, and hopefully other people will be inspired and take up similar actions. Even if it's just one street corner, you can put out a traffic cone and you can tell your city, hey, look, this worked, let's do it. And so we've seen across the US and across the globe, people taking it upon themselves to try these changes out. And many, many times this has then led to longer term transformation or investment from city departments or leaders, which is really exciting to see. And when they did a Vision Zero project on Mass Ave, they did one section where I'd been dropping cones. For months and months, they actually put uh, flex posts in this one location in the street. So that felt like a, an endorsement of what I had been doing. When you talk about tactical urbanism, you talk about some urban activists that are trying to do some guerrilla work. But here in Rotterdam, the local government, they are embracing, they want to have it. They see it as a tool to promote their strategic plans and to promote plans that they have for the long term, to do it very fast. We live in Vancouver and the city has done so much over the last few years to engage a lot of spaces. And you know, the biggest example would be a place like Robson Square, which usually is choked with buses and cars, but for the last several years, they've closed it off to car traffic and opened up and livened up the space. So it's a proof that if you just try something and try changing a space up, it can become a permanent addition to your city. Thanks Vic for um, joining the video. I thought that was a really great way to really showcase what tactical urbanism is, uh, urbanism is urbanism is, sorry, I can't speak. And although, I mean, they showed examples in bigger cities like New York and Chicago, but this, these are things and projects that can happen in Lincoln and in smaller towns in our neighborhoods. Um, essentially, I, I think it's like a cool way of, to think of it as like a crowdsourced infrastructure. And I think is it's a commitment to community and uh, like they said in the video, re essentially reimagining these spaces and, and, and locations or places in our communities to make it more safe and more engaging and more vibrant. Um, and it's really unfortunate that like these, these movements are, um, this was created because of like how slow the structures of bureaucracy are to address these issues in the city. Um, but these moments and these projects really bring attention to things that have been ignored. Um, and, and really using, yeah, I, uh, some examples in Lincoln that I thought of, or like the, the free, the fridges, um, all over town. Also the, the little library, um, yeah, all, all over town too. And so those are, those are some, some projects that community members kickstarted and, um, it's really cool. Really, really cool. I think go to the next slide, Vic. So I guess a question that I want to propose to is like, what is something that is bothering you in your neighborhood or what is something that needs attention? Um, some examples that of that like South of Downtown has done. Uh, we host these Second Art Friday shows and uh, Peggy Gomez, she installed this art installation using a lot of plastic bags and really showcasing the amount of litter in the streets or the amount of litter that has been increasing because of winter, because of, um, of the pandemic. Um, another example was our Kat Weiss, one of our community arts organizers, she did yarn storming. And um, basically, if you see the middle picture, just sewing like, colorful, vibrant yarns around poles and trees and around bike racks and really beautifying the our, our environment in ways that, you know, a lot of people don't really pay attention to. I remember I was outside of Grace uh, Church and yarn, like, so helping Kat sew one of the, the bike racks. And a bunch of these kids walked by and they're like, wow, this is kind of like Dr. Seuss's world or I don't know, something along that line. So it was really cool. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to turn the next
slide to you, Vic. I think you're you're next to, to talk. I think we can stay on um, this for a little while because we're going to, before I think going on to the session where we talk more about in details about the project kits, we'll have a little break because there's a couple people who might join us for round one. But um, so if we're okay with it, I would, I would love to <laughs> talk about this more. I'm fairly new to like, I've heard tactical urbanism many times I've seen some examples but I'm really curious to know what other people think about how it can be applied in Lincoln and in uh, some of the spaces that we talked about earlier like places we spend a lot of time um so I'd, I'd pass it back to you Christy if you'd want to like in, I don't know or anyone else who has, has comments based off the video or anything that Christy just shared yeah no I think for me too um there's we have like a busy intersection um, by the office on 11th and it's right across from Everett Elementary School and I was talking to one of our, our uh, resident members and she's um, and our professor at UNL Stacy Asher and she was trying to think of ways to like I don't know how to slow down traffic that car because cars just speed down that that street and so she has these like very vibrant bright pink like I don't know if it's tape or or it's just rolls of like, it, it stick to the ground. And so she was thinking of using that. Yes, thank you, Allie, vinyl. Um, um, sticking that to like slow down traffic and bring more attention to that. So that's something that I was thinking of um, as an example, but does anyone else can think of anything or maybe an issue that you really weren't thinking about in your neighborhood or in, in, in the community in general? I could share a little bit more about that intersection project um now it's turned into like it went from talking about what if we use the public right of way to create a garden because you know if people see all these beautiful plants maybe they'll slow down and then it's taken almost a year working with city staff trying to figure out what what processes you would have to go through to get a crosswalk in there. Um, and, and what it's turning into now is there's gonna be a giant smiley face mural painted there and it's gonna say, slow your roll. And so stay tuned for that. We're just, I think we're waiting for the weather, but that'll be so much fun. Is there anything that people can think of? I, I feel like, because like I said, I'm fairly new to this. I, I can't think yet to solution. Like that's a few steps ahead. Is anyone thinking about any spaces? There were a lot of examples involving bikes in that video, but so maybe it is transportation or bike related, but like doesn't have to be that you're just like this space or place could be used better or could be safer or more inviting. I was thinking about oh. that with the, um the bus stop that they had um also the flamingo fabric was fabulous and got my attention but in the little garden but so many of our i mean i know there's plenty of other um more pressing issues with our public transit in lincoln but for those who use it it is so valuable and um there's so few of our stops that are even entirely visible or they don't have covering or there's not a bench and it, there's certainly nothing inviting that would say um hey, please use public transit. I mean, you know, the two hour rides alone are, are enough, but but a lot of students use them too, especially once we give that free pass to them and a lot of our um, workers and, uh, and refugee community members and boy, especially with the Nebraska weather, but also just if you kind of have to be at a place for 30 minutes while you're waiting for your next bus, just to have something um, welcoming and whimsical and beautiful and, comfortable so that you don't feel like you're just standing on the street corner but that it actually feels like a space you know and not this really bizarre holding cell just i think that would be that would be fun that's a really good idea um i i never thought about that um i was gonna say planting trees is huge that goes a really long way i know that's not something with a payoff but like if you plant trees in the space between the sidewalk and the street it's going to make the street feel a little bit more enclosed with the tree branches hanging over. And so that tends to psychologically make drivers drive a little bit slower and safer. And then the tree also provides a barrier between the cars and the pedestrians. So pedestrians feel a lot safer because they've got a big thick tree, you know, 
20 feet or whatever. And so if a car does swerve off, then it's going to hit the tree before. It hits the and then also another huge benefit is trees provide a lot of flood amelioration. So like trees will slurp up that rainwater and that actually ends up being a huge benefit to the city. Not to mention they just feel nicer. And then also um, CO2, uh, it's a carbon sink as well. So trees go like a really long way, but the payoff's not immediate. So, you know, but that's an easy thing that everyone can do is just plant more trees. Oh, do you want um, Yeah, and then another thing I know about tactical urbanism is tactical gardening. Um, so finding those weird spaces of dirt that just exist around, it might be next to an apartment complex that is never being touched, that kind of stuff, and just broadcasting some seeds. Usually it's recommended to do like flowers first for an area you can't really maintain often and don't anticipate staying there all the time. But if you can use the place to turn it into a garden mm -hmm. that grows actual edible food, that's a better option. But people won't willingly rip out flowers most of the time. So yeah. nobody wants to be the jerk that yeah. yeah. Yeah, that brings up what I think about as far as projects is and there's some huge right of ways just down the way from me that could make a lot of food for people. Um, this block that I'm thinking about specifically because of its location is like seventh and C, which is in the area of the Germans in Russia Museum. Uh, there's a couple places on that block that are just huge, huge lines of grass uh, that could feed so many people. <laughs> so, uh, and there's that, uh, I just think it's nice because it's right next to Cooper Park too. These are awesome ideas. And I can tell like people already are bringing such a sustainable, like <laughs> like y'all are thinking about what's, what, will, what will disrupt, but also like what will stay disrupting, like with the trees idea and also gardening. What are other people thinking about or issue areas or solutions? Anything in the mix? Um, something that I've kind of been doing uh, over the summer mostly, uh, last summer, was um, kind of how Peggy was doing the plastic bag thing. Um, on TikTok, there's been um, a lot of um, people in groups like this who have been making um like like mats or or rolls out of um plastic bags and they crochet them together so people who um you know like have to sleep outside have this barrier between them and the hard ground and it also um, is like insulation um but adding on to that uh i was trying to think of like what we could do with like all the scraps with that. And um, I've been kind of looking into um, like eco bricks, which are just like plastic bottles or whatever, jammed full of um, different plastics and uh, non-biodegradable waste. And um, yeah, with those, you can make like all sorts of things like benches and chairs. And it also adds that nice aspect of, um, you know, looking really cool and fun as well, so. Um, no specific spots for that. I just thought I'd throw it out there. That's so cool, Emma. Um, I, I really love, I love how like the viral nature of a lot of this cool stuff has helped it spread. Um, yeah. Because when I saw, when I saw the thing about the plastic bags that were being crocheted, I was like, well, if we can use plastic bags like that, I can use plastic bags like in the place of rope. And so I made like macrame um, plant uh, hangers. Um, and I just like tied the strips of plastic together. And then I made like, I learned the little basic knots to hang my plants. And now I'm thinking of like, how can we do that? And then like couple it with like maybe Jody's idea of like hanging it up a bus stop or something and just making it a little, a little bit more fun and having like um, flowers in places like that. So I love all these things can like go together, which is super cool. Yeah. Well, and that reminds me of um, this most recent uh, round of mini grant funding that we did. Nick Svoboda, who lives in the, the near south, um, maybe more specifically the Everett neighborhood. Um, but 
in the south of downtown and he wanted to he applied for the funding to put a bench in next to his little free library because it's a spot that a lot of people walk by and whether they're accessing the library or not like folks walking from russ's market or you know any of the the local businesses just need a place to sit down and rest and so he's going to be constructing that um I mean, he's a he's a very handy person, so he's going to be making it on his own, but out of mostly recycled materials. So I cannot wait to see what he puts together um, and what that's going to look like. But I think that's kind of along these lines as well. I'm really glad you you gave that example, Nancy, because I was going to ask people like, what do y'all? Um, we're talking about various things that can make spaces more inviting and or more sustainable or offering more such as trees and gardens and that sort of thing. But part of like um, the, something that they mentioned in the video was like how cities are embracing spaces to be more inviting for people to gather. And I'm curious if there's places that you wish were more like either accessible or just fun or pretty for people to, to be in and maybe like, I mean, we have some lovely parks like in Lincoln. I, I love our parks a lot, but um, really are there, are, do people have any ideas or, or places that they would like to make more around the people and and, and are in, in nature maybe, but are not just about like the park being nice and having trees and stuff. I don't know if anyone thinks about, yeah, just kind of are there spaces to make more community and people centric That's good. Okay. I so have we a, any. Oh, I have an idea. <laughs> um, I know that a few cities, and this is like more of a macro thing, but a few cities have like introduced um, uh, uh, different like um, trailers, like that are flat, and they just put like benches and stuff on them. Um, or actually, maybe it was train cars. I can't remember, but like they, it's like open, um, and then they put in benches, and then they installed like Wi-Fi hotspots. And so like they had um, this thing that could like move from place to place um, that has like the Wi-Fi and it has benches and it has like greenery on it. Um, and I'm sure that there's like a way to do that on like a micro level. Um, but that was one thing that I, I thought of would like, if you're gonna use the Wi-Fi, you're gonna be there for like at least two minutes. So um, why not just hang out and, and talk with your neighbors and stuff? I was also thinking about more ways to turn our public spaces um, into spaces that encourage play for kids. I think a lot of our families think that they need to go to a park that has a playground to play because sometimes our beautiful spaces or um, spaces that have sculptures and things like that seem inaccessible for play. And um, like, our kids, if they live in, in uh, apartment buildings or in high density places, they don't really have that outdoor space. So if anything could be slightly turned into something like a little mini stage or, um, you know, just little things that look like something you could play with, but aren't necessarily a straight up playground or whatever, just to kind of help our students have more spaces to be themselves. On that, it's kind of related, but not on that note, um, a couple of summers ago, so it was the summer before COVID, there was a neighbor down here who lived by like Guerrero's Market on 11th and G. Um, and on one of the blocks adjacent to it, across from like Cultiva and stuff, uh, there's this empty lot, which has just been empty for a long time. And all of a sudden, like one day I randomly saw this Facebook um, event for a poetry reading in that empty lot. And I was like, obviously like they didn't get like permission from the property owner or anything they were just like hey meet up on this night to have a poetry reading um in the moonlight i think even and so things like that are super cool to see like neighbors like being like let's just use it like if they care they care and then that's it um but if they don't then it's a place for us to reclaim
Something that goes along with that, Isabel, that's like really, really simple, but something that I like that our um, neighborhood association brought up at one of our last meetings. Uh, there's a little free pantry in Cooper Park and they just wanted to put like basically a cork board up on the back of it so that there can be like neighborhood event postings and like something like a poetry reading happening in Cooper Park would be really cool. And it'd be nice just to know about that from seeing that posted on a, yeah, in our neighborhood. These are all very amazing conversations. And I think that is the point of like um, tactical urbanism too, is, is kickstarting these conversations. And I really like what Isabel has said was just reclaiming these spaces and kind of like not giving, you know, a crap about, you know, if you're gonna get in trouble or not. I think that's kind of the attractive aspect of it in my opinion. Um, but I think, I think I'm gonna wrap it up for the session if that's okay with everyone. Um, and I think we might take a little break if that's correct. Yeah, let's let's take a break. Um, maybe Vic, do you think we want to come back at like one o'clock and get started? Yeah. We want to just yeah plan to come back at one. And in this meantime, grab your make sure you have your kit next to you or handy or whatever, and um, we'll start walking through some details about it. But also uh, brainstorming and just getting jazzed to go do some stuff. So. I will, um, I can plan to, you know, play some sort of obnoxious song at one, um, but feel free to turn off your camera and we'll be back in about five minutes. See ya.
really hoping to feel um, some power as like people start turning on their video again to this song. Yeah, it's doing it's doing for me what I hoped it would. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan, for the finger dancing. All right. Um, I'm guessing that people will turn their cameras on if they're turning back on in a couple seconds. But um, I get to uh, do the fun portion of getting us mindful and hyped about using some of the supplies that um, each of you have chosen one type of the kits. Um, and um, I just want to um, kind of invite you as we walk through this to think about um, how, how it's about, how using the tools is still about you and, and about the people you connect with, um, not about the tools. There's not a perfect, there's not a completion. Um, this is, yeah, how it fosters community, how it builds community, AKA is the Community Builder Workshop. So um, I'm gonna share from over here, I think. And I'm really like either bad or just disinterested in like titling things. And so um, I, Nancy, I think actually, can you make Vic to a host? I don't think I can actually make Vic to a host. Um, and so this, this session is called Neighborhood Engagement and Social Connection, um, which really doesn't like get at the heart of, of what this is. Um, so maybe we'll come up with a better title for it as we go, but thank you, Nancy. Okay. All right. I'm stoked. Let's move this over. Oh, I'm not sure why it's looking like that. One sec. Okay. So don't overthink it. Um, because I did that for you already. <laughs> um, there is a lot of mindfulness that I think does come into um, how we want to engage folks in our various places and spaces and communities. Um, but ultimately the practice of it is simple. It's you being humans, it's us being humans together um, in the awkwardness and messiness and fun that that is. So um, I'm gonna go through the the three kits and I think that, let me just quick check um, who, does anyone here have the chalk it up? I, I do. Perfect, Emma and Shayla. Um, I, so I think then we have one person at least who has the letters to lawmakers and another person with, or a few of you have the camera. Great, so we've got folks doing all, well, at least one of each type. So um, I think that this first point on chalk it up is relevant for all of them. I repeat it, if you wanna be where people are, think about where are they? Um, I have a wonderful setup at my house because I'm right on Randolph Street and there's quite a number of folks who, who like walk by, go into Runza to get a cone. Um, but if that's not quite like where your house is, again, it, within your comfort levels, but think about like if you went down the block to more of an intersection or is there a park or even, um, we mentioned bus stops, but just try and think about what makes sense for your space that you'll be able to, to see a few folks if maybe you're kind of tucked away where you actually live. Um, with chalking, I have, um, I, I gave a resource um, to, uh, every, to both of you who have that um, of just a bunch of ideas about ways messages that you can send to your, to your neighbors, but as well as um, things that are more interactive. Um, I don't know if, I don't wanna put y'all two on the spot, but looking at that, that resource I gave Emma and, and Shayla, are there any ideas on there that you are, interest you? 
um, that you think you might you you might want to try out today or whenever it is that you do this? Um, yeah, I like the the um, the question ones. I thought were really fun, where you just leave the piece of chalk. Um, so I think I'm going to try that. Um, still haven't decided what I'm going to put yet, but I think that's cool. really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think messages of positivity and like polling would be really fun because I think I'll do it near um, Prescott because that's where the bulk of my community is since that's where I work. Um, and I will get some hilarious answers from children mm -hmm. <laughs> during their playground time. So that'll awesome. be <laughs> Yeah, cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're leaning into you know some of the interactive options there. Um, so with those uh, general rules of thumb, like trying to make the instructions or the invitation for what you're inviting people to do really clear. And that also carries through with the letters and also the camera thing just being, a, especially if you don't know someone at all, they're like, what does this person want from me? Um, and so being as clear and as inviting as possible is generally going to have a, a better outcome. Um, and I mentioned like arrows to show if you're leaving chalk behind, leaving those are really, yeah, great um, but if you're hanging around for a while you're even better to have that to, to offer that invitation to take part in it I've definitely <laughs> um, I have a big window in my um, living room and so when I see people walk by and they like consider like answering the thing that I've left on my driveway but they're like about to walk by I will like go to my door and be like hey you can do that <laughs> if you want to um, some of the kids have been really like um, but they've gotten over it really fast um, I think it's been my socks with sandals that has like really deflated any intimidation that I could have had. Um, and then also what I was saying earlier, participate in whatever it is that you're asking people to do. If you're asking a question, answer the question yourself. Um, if you are drawing something, draw something yourself. You know, just, I think that also is generally for the goal of tactical urbanism, thinking about how you think about the space is, is important before you can really like consider and understand how other people are too. Um, and then building that power, ideally. Um, yeah, and then just choosing one thing to start with, I think, before you head outside is probably a good way. So <laughs> you get out there. I know for myself, I can get overwhelmed when I actually, like, I'm ready to do this. Oh, I have too many ideas. So choosing something to start with. Um, I think I had a couple, uh, yeah, I, I tried out a few of these things. Um, some are more successful than others. Um, this was from a couple days ago. Um, when I first put it down. So I asked like, what is your favorite place? And then there was this, that picture with the tree is really not a great picture, but it's a taken leaf tree. So you take what you need, leaf what you've got. Um, and some folks were engaging in the past couple of days and there are <laughs> some really funny answers like um, underground and above ground are <laughs> some of the favorite <laughs> ones. <laughs> Um, but then someone left a nice note on the tree saying, thanks for asking me. Um, so there's already some engagement happening. Um, and I honestly have been busy and not attending to it much at all. So that is anything on for folks who are going to tackle chalk it up that you're, or you have another idea that you want to see what people think of, or yeah, just anything that you want to figure out before you're feeling ready to do it. Oh, I was going to ask, is it supposed to rain anytime today? Like, <laughs> yes, I great question. I think it is later this evening. So if you want to save this, the chalking, I till if there's going to be clear like next day, do whatever you want. Also, it, box it. It. yeah, but I think that in the in the context of safety and like sustainability or whatever, like that's one of those things you have to kind of take into account how what's going to make this the most successful. But if you if it washes away, it gives you another reason to get back out yeah. there. And one of the best ways to engage people is by doing the thing and people are like, what are you doing? So awesome. So the letters to lawmakers, um, this is something that was originated not this idea, not with me. I'm completely leveraging this. This came from a couple from South of downtown folks, Kat Weiss, especially, and, and I think Isabel and Christy might have been involved too, and Ali, I know for sure, and um, and Michelle Clifford, who is a teacher at LPS um, and just fabulous in a lot of ways. But asking the same question, if you want to be where people are, where are they? Um, and um, 
if you, again, depending on your setup, if you want to kind of set up shop, there's clipboard, a clipboard there so that there's a writing surface. But if there's a, a picnic bench or a park nearby or something, that can be a great um, place to set up too in an informal way. Um, and then there's um, two pieces of poster board in the, in the kit for you to just write, a, you know, however ornate sign you want to, to let people know what you're doing and stick it on a piece of pit tape or whatever it is, just um, signs can be inviting as well. So people don't have to just ask a human, um, but that's great too. If they're like, I really wanna know, I'm very curious. I'm gonna ask this individual. Um, I also, I suggested a few kind of prompts um, for people who are like writing to an elected official. I do not do that. Um, and some of these are, I, I suggested about asking people um, what they want to tell the city council to spend their money on, given that the council will be considering Lincoln's budget soon. Um, but you can start with something so much more basic than that of just, what would you want your leaders to know about how the last year's been for you? Um, and there's nothing wrong to talk to elected leaders about and um, the, a letter um, rather than a phone call might be a bit more fun and, and less intimidating for people who are just giving it a shot. Um, I'm gonna, sorry, I haven't been looking at the chat. Um, oh, awesome, group. Yes, um, good thoughts and, and Beth, Beth, we're glad that you were able to join. Um, so yeah. Can I, I, can I add something here really absolutely. quick, Vic? Um, one thing that I've been doing over this, this most recent, um, legislative session and after watching some of the council meetings for the last year, um, I've been sending thank you letters um, and emails to some of the council members and state senators. This has been a difficult year for, for many of us and, and I just wanted, one thing I've heard from some elected officials is sometimes it's just nice to get a, to get a thank you, to get a positive message every now and again. So. So I try to do that um, so often. I think we find ourselves being upset with the system or being upset with you know, some of the folks who are in those places of power and um, we're telling them that this is a bad thing or we oppose this. Um, and so I think that just sending some of those more positive energy vibes um, can kind of keep folks, keep them going um, and, and let them know that you know, this is something that I care about and I'm glad that, you know, we share that sentiment together. So, so that's another way to go about it too. Thanks for bringing that up, Nancy. I think those thank yous are especially impactful when there's a representative when uh, that doesn't, doesn't always agree with you on all of the issues or maybe you find yourself frustrated with a lot of times, but if they actually um, do, take, do, do take a position that you think is positive, um, than being like, oh, wow, like there is some good that uh, that can happen out of our, our like representative and constituent relationship. So like, thank you for, for doing this one thing. Um, and I hope that you can continue to do those things in the future. So I think that those things are also really helpful, especially because um, in the state legislature, there's, there's people who, I mean, technically it's nonpartisan. So like there's people who you might surprise you sometimes really pleasantly. Um, and it's really cool to like reach out to them. And then they're like, oh, like I do have allies everywhere. And one thing I will, yeah, thanks for broadening the kind of um, topics that you can talk to or, or write letters to leaders about. One thing I will say for also a um, another strength, uh, <laughs> something that, that could be turned into a strength also with this kind of activity is if people, there's a lot of like disillusionment um, and, and people who don't, you know, want to talk to elected leaders at all, or don't consider that they're interested or invested in um, the day-to-day -day functions of our lives. And that's very reasonable. <laughs> um, and I would, something I've been thinking about is how then, how do we turn that energy into things like tactical urbanism? So if someone's like, eh, not my thing, it's like, okay, like what are issues that you want, like that you think that we can solve our ourselves? And um, which is just the beauty of, of having a perspective that we hope that all of us here are continuing to develop of like, 
if not them, then us, and if us, then them, um, and really trying to make that a holistic like approach to, to changing our community and making it inclusive and better. Is there anything um, anyone wants to add or ask about um, this project? Cool. Um, oh, I think that the, a resource that I put in those kids specifically, but I added it to others is just a, a run through of who represents me and it's Lincoln specific. Um, if someone's like on a border or you aren't sure, um, you can go to Nebraska's, um, Nebraska dot, what is it? Nebraska legislature dot gov. Um, I can put the link in the chat or someone else can for finding senators and you can just quickly, pretty easily pull that up on your phone. Yeah, thanks for including that. Um, I might have my high schoolers actually do this. So Yo, they all awesome. of them probably have no idea who represents them. Yes, no, that'd be great. Cool. All right, gonna go on then to our last one, which, uh, I have less, oh, there's the, the resource that I was talking about, um, which I think I put in most kits. If I missed yours, sorry about it, but. Um, so the indisposable images, We've got a disposable camera, I believe it has 27 shots. Is that the word? I can't believe that I'm in charge of this. <laughs> I'm not a photographer, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I do like people and I like pictures of people. So. <laughs> Here are my qualifications. Um, again, that same question about, I didn't even include it on here, but if you wanna be where people are, where are they? But this, you don't need to um, try to focus on um, taking photos of people. Um, I will mention that, so I, everyone who's got the disposable camera, we had to have you sign just a, a brief waiver um, because it involves photography and all of that. Um, but we would love to, after we develop the film and we'll I can walk through the logistics of, I think it was an email that Nancy sent about where you could drop off the camera so we can take care of that for you. It's my house and Nancy's, um, where our addresses are in that email as well. But we would love to display some of the, the photos that you take um, at some unexact <laughs> future public event um, to be able to celebrate how y'all took part in this and then the neighborhoods and spaces that you are documenting. Um, and we'll, we'll be able to kind of, um, we'll ask you to maybe identify some of those photos for us. And because of um, just the, the waiver and legal stuff, they can't, those photos can't involve or can't include people. Um, so feel free to do that, get permission from folks. If you're, if you want to take someone's photo, you know, photo, always ask permission. Um, but if you're thinking about um, us being able to display something, we'd love to have a wonderful photo of a space that doesn't involve identifiable persons. Um, I didn't mean to start out with the bummer of that, but I, it's still gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Um, so one thing I've encountered in various community meetings with people who aren't in like a space, like in a neighborhood like near South that is fairly well known and somewhat well defined. People kind of know like where that is. If you're unsure what the borders are of the neighborhood that you're actually in, like I'm not, Emily, you mentioned you're kind of on an edge and I don't, I would not have known at all the edge of College View versus High Street. So if that's helpful, take a quick look on Google Maps and just be like, okay, this is generally where I am. Um, and think about maybe going to a part of your neighborhood that you don't typically walk through or drive through. Um, a suggestion that I had on here about, look at something that you, you do drive past, but you rarely look at it on foot. And sometimes that can really change your perspective of um, what that is. Um, I also invite you to um, identify a place, like a park, a business, a school or intersection that people outside your neighborhood would recognize. You can mention it by name and be like, okay, yeah, I know that. Uh, but then what's the place that people wouldn't recognize by name, um, but you do see frequently or you notice? Um, and then what do you know your neighborhood for? That could be your house, that could be yourself or your family, that could be where you um, walk your dog, anything like that. Um, and those are just some ideas. I put a little sheet that printed real wonky in the um, camera kits and feel free to jot down a couple of these ideas or what you're kind of thinking before you then head outside if that's helpful for you. Um, but if you 
just want to get outside and start snapping exposures. <laughs> Thank you for the technical term. Uh, feel free to do that as well. Um, I will mention that I think that that was, yeah. So this is, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap up here. I really like this model um, because all of these kits, like I said, it's not, it's not about the kit. It's not about completing 10 letters or getting 27 amazing shots or anything like that. It's about connecting with folks and noticing people and places and um, feeling, yeah, feeling connected um, in ways that I, we've been really massively deprived of for um, a long time because of the pandemic. Um, and um, I, when I was chalking a couple nights ago, I was really tired and like it was in the evening and I was excited to try out ideas, but I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna do this. And um, not really thinking about how I could talk to the people around me. And as I was drawing, and I'm a horrible artist, like I cannot draw at all. My neighbor pulled in and he like gets out of his truck and he kind of looks at me like, what are you doing? And he's like, what's up? And I was like, I can't draw leaves at all. I'm really bad at drawing leaves. And I was like, can you draw leaves? And he's like, yeah, actually my wife and I, we got our MFAs and we're professors at UNL and ceramics, blah, 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 blah. And he tells me like, his, he's had like multiple profession careers. And I've talked to this guy a handful of times, very just like pretty limited things. And I never knew this about him. And it just opened up this huge opportunity for conversation. And it was a, not at all about the, the taken leaf tree. It was about us, getting to know each other more. Um, and me having overlooked this guy that I just kind of took for granted, I thought I knew what he did or what he was about. Um, and so that was that was in that learning zone. Um, be cognizant, whether in regards to COVID safety, cars, whatever, that panic zone uh, that creates anxiety, fear, paralysis, all that, that's not the space we want you to be in and that won't bring <laughs> the good feelings or the, the opportunities for tactical urbanism. So, oh, but I do challenge you to get outside that that center spot, um, ask questions, and just be the thoughtful, amazing people that we we know you are. Um, I'm gonna stop there. Um, any questions or comments on what I just went over? Who's feeling excited? Yay. Um, if anyone can benefit from, <clears throat> I was gonna, I wasn't going to plan to have to do this activity, but if anyone wants to um, practice <laughs> engaging people that are complete strangers on any of this stuff, like feel free to um, kind of stay on as we start to splinter out. Um, we can also, I think, I'm not actually sure. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm not actually sure if we can send, do we, do we have breakout rooms possible in this, Nancy? I forgot to ask about that. I don't think we were planning on it, but um, we can just kind of go with the flow here and see, we can stick around for a little bit while longer if anyone has any questions or any follow-up um, that they want to talk through. And then basically from 1.30 on, it's just your time to go out and to experiment with these kits. Um, I think just a couple of, of other housekeeping things. We were gonna have everybody come back at two o'clock and log back into the Zoom. That's probably not a reality in terms of, you know, all of us coming back at the, the exact time. So I'm not gonna ask anyone to do that. Instead, if you do work on any of your projects today, we would love for you to snap some photos just with your phone um, and post it in, we have a Facebook group, um, if somebody wants to drop that in the chat really quick, um, it's a Collective Impact Lincoln Facebook group. Hopefully some of you are already a part of it. Um, it's a public group that you can join. You can post some photos in there of your projects that you're doing. Um, we're on Instagram. Um, I don't know if we came up with a hashtag or not. Um, and so we just wanna see what you're working on. And then I am going to send a follow-up email probably on Monday 
like I said, with the evaluation form so you can kind of rate the workshop. And then if you have any questions about any of this um, that we've gone over today, I will have a link to our team page with all of our email contact information. Um, so you can follow up with me, any of the organizers on the call today, and we can talk through any of these things together. But we can we can hang out for a little bit if anyone wants to to chat through anything. I'm just curious at this point, where are people planning on going? Do you have an idea of where you're going to go? Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm going to probably do that at Prescott, but not when there's thunderstorm warnings. <laughs> Is there a thunderstorm warning right now? Yeah, it's might storm like from 4 p.m. all the way to like 2 a.m. basically. Or like rain, although I don't know. If, I think the storms is just a window in there, but rain for sure. I love a good storm. Me too. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Um, I have the camera um, and I'm excited to, I'm really sad. We have to move out of our house um and move somewhere else so i want to document what it's like been like to like live on our corner with like all of our neighbors and stuff and like kind of what we see day to day so that's what i'll be um using my camera for because it's like it's kind of like in the middle of like nowhere but then there's like all of these people that like i've come to know who are like staples in the neighborhood it's like oh there's the kids who are riding their bikes again and there's john the guy who rides his bike and like you know does general lawn care and, and just like handyman things for everyone. So that's what I'm going to use my project for. I think I'm going to, I have the camera too, and I think I'm going to take mine around this general area and try to really take stock and notice like where people are growing plants, like whether it's just like for beauty or for eating. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to maybe, I'm always looking for that kind of thing, but I'm not, I think I would like the excuse to like, try to get a good photograph of it too, like have that interaction with it. Fabulous. <clears throat> Emma, you said you, you live at like 10th and C, right? Are you gonna do it outside where you live? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I ruined the microphone again. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, I was just thinking of going out. A lot of people walk down there, so I figured that was a good spot. Yeah, I'm gonna have some friends, some pals come over in a couple minutes, and I think we might just do some like doodling and fun stuff for today, and more like interactive stuff. I'll just put out there tomorrow. So, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that you are going to do great. I'm excited to see pictures, um, both from film and from phone. And um, yeah, if there's anything, I think that I, I texted most of y'all earlier. So if there's anything that comes up, um, please reach out. Anything else to cap off on? Sweet. It's a party. Y'all are great. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks yeah. for joining us today. Thank you guys so much for putting this on. Yeah, thank you for this one. This is really fun. I think we have a lot of project kits left over, so we're probably going to do another one of these. So whether you want to join us again and sign up for a different kit, um, but you know, we just really want to be able to share this out with as many people as possible. So tell your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors about it and try to get them engaged because we just want more people to do this with us. So thank you, everyone. Yeah. Sounds good.